just starting to deepen the mast cover with some more of the aqua green and Windsor blue to make it even deeper and then uh, a little texture with the tissue on the top to get some highlights back. And now I'm going to paint the mast using the heel of my hand, although my mast is in the, um, almost oops, dangerously so, in the middle of the painting uh, and just off to the left a little bit. Sorry about my hat. I'll have to find another way of doing this. <laughs> with a very, very light value to start with. Deepen it a little bit. The painting is not about the mast. It does need to be there, obviously, but the painting is not about the mast. So I don't want a very, very deep um, value. And I like a little bit of variety. So I just spritz a bit, use my tissue a little bit. I don't know what this part of the mast is called. I just call it the crosshairs. I know it's not, but that's what I call it. Fortunately, those little crosshairs on every boat is a different height. I guess depending on the length to width ratio of the boat and the keel and whatnot, but I put them where it suits my painting, where I feel it looks best for my painting. I'm not doing a case study on a boat. I am painting a scene of some guys working on their boat on the weekend and just having a good time and just getting really involved in looking after their, their sailboat. Changed my mind, I was going to do something else and then I've decided to put some water at the top edge of that dark of the hull. And then I'm dropping in some deeper, richer paint underneath where I've put in the water so that I get a nice soft edge. It is pretty hot today, so it's not running where I would like it to as quickly as I would like it to. Never mind. Just washing it out and getting a more soft edge back. I'll probably have to come back and do this again. I'm quite happy to go back and do several glazes because it helps me to, of, of everything in my painting, because it helps me to balance the painting better. If I go in with rich darks too soon, I know this from experience for me, um, then my painting's out of balance, I lose all my lights and I never like them after that. So it's best for me to do it this way. This is a uh, a heavy, a, a heavy handed watercolorist's guide to painting. <laughs> and now I'm washing out some of it from left to right and starting to add in some of the junk that's on the ground part of the cradle that's holding the boat up. Just cutting around little legs and bits and pieces that are on the ground. The colours that I've used in my palette before, Burnt Sienna, Windsor, Windsor Blue, a little bit of um, the aqua green and building the colour up into a dark. I'm cutting around this road cone that's part of my lead-in So I've got the darkest dark virtually against the lightest light of the top of the road cone. Mixing a black for something, Windsor Blue, Permanent Alizarin, and a bit of Burnt Sienna. Preparing myself for something interesting. 
oh, I'm going to start painting the actual cradle on the top. All different angles, nothing the same as anything else is my target. I think this is my number 12 De La Rowney Sapphire Brush. Beg your pardon, I think it's actually my number 10, which is the brush that I pick up most when I'm painting. It's quite interesting. I can flatten it out, make some quite wide marks. I can make very uh, thin marks, very narrow marks. I can do some really great line work with it as well. Paint's quite dry. I wish I'd done a bit of a spritz. I must have been pretty involved and not thought about it at the time. Just some random marks to suggest rubbish and detritus all over the place at this boatyard. Some of the marks are wider than others. Yay! bit more of a spritz to, just to loosen some stuff up and give me some softer edges. Filling up some more space on that left hand side with something, maybe it's a palette or a drum of some description and a little bit of detail. I think I'm adding a couple of wee beer bottles. And trying to create little shapes with variety just as much as I do with the big shapes. So using the colours that I've used in my palette, some of the bottles are burnt sienna, some of them have got a little bit of Windsor blue mixed into them, some of them are that tacky green that I've mixed with a bit more of the burnt sienna in them. All sorts of weird and wonderful. Some of them are dark, some of them are light values. They're really just shapes that I like. Nothing special about them. I really don't know what that thing is on the left. I can't remember what I was looking at. Hmm. I might have just made it up. A little bit of modelling on the man with the greeny blue manganese shirt, manganese blue shirt. And I wasn't happy with my man with the brown shirt. So um, he's been relegated now to more of a background figure. Originally he was going to be my focal point.
a little bit obscured. I'll try and demonstrate, do a studio demonstration of painting figures for you soon and put that on the same page with the Watercolour Techniques Facebook page. Without a hat. <laughs> Mixing up a super dark there, bit of that aqua green, the phthalo blue, and some alizarin crimsons. Really great dark tinting colours. So important when you're choosing your palette. As long as you can make a rich, rich dark, you should be able to create a palette, um, a, a painting with all values. And just deepening up that hull underneath the underside of that boat again just wasn't dark enough. As I said to you before, I quite like to build up with several layers. Usually th no more than three anyway. Hopefully no more than three. If I've made a mistake or it's not gauged it properly, I'll have to go back again. The, and part of the problem is some of these colours do lighten quite a bit once they've dried. Which is why... I choose these particular colours because I know how they work and I don't like colours. I don't like colours that have got soot in them. I don't like colours that have been produced in a firing process, except for, of course, burnt sienna. But it's got no soot in it that you can determine, so I'm okay with burnt sienna. It is actually one of my favourite colours to use in my palette. Just sweeping out a little bit of a light there. This is my uh, Da Vinci number 16 flat. And I always have a good stash of them. Because I do go through, I need a new one every year just about. Because I, I really just use them for scrubbing. I don't use them for painting at all. They're not a good painting brush. They're really just an acrylic brush I think. But they are very good as a watercolour scrubbing brush. A little bit more detail of these beer bottles and things, just because I like it. There weren't any beer bottles there, but I put them in because it amuses me. And that's the whole thing about painting, isn't it? It's just what gives us pleasure. You have to work out what gives you pleasure and what you like. adding a little bit of a shadow to that front road cone and the reason for that particular area was because it was amongst all that lovely light in the front of the painting in the foreground so I virtually got a very dark shadow on the road cone next to a very bright light value light
little bit of spatter with some white gouache. And a little bit of detail on the base of that sign in the front. They really like a, a tire rim, a wheel rim, I think. A little bit of detail just to cut around where the post for the sign is stuck into the base. A little bit of a shadow. A little bit more detail on another sign that's in the background a little bit further. There's actually three signs. There's this one that I'm working on right now on the left, one in the centre left and another one on the right hand side. I'm sticking with odd numbers where I can. and where I've thought about it. I'm twisting my brush to get the pigment and the water all loaded into my brush as much as I possibly can. Nothing worse than painting with a dry brush. As I said, in this heat, they do dry up very, very quickly. I've decided to turn that light area into a bucket. Oh, I know what I'm doing here and you can't see it. So what I'm doing is doing um, some rigger work. Obviously, I've got the rigger in my hand and I'm just painting some ropes and tetherings around the, um, the mast cover, the sail cover, beg your pardon. A little bit of texture marks with that white gouache which is my favourite thing I love white gouache A little bit of shadow work on this sign. Just a few scumbly marks in the foreground. It 
and now I'm adding a broom. Just a long handle with a bit of a sweepy thing across the bottom. Oh, it's more like a more like a garden rake, a leaf rake. I don't know why you would have one in the boatyard, but now they have. And a light violety shadow colour for the windows on the boat. Now I'm adding some rigging with my rigger brush and just using a light value sludgy grey that's in my palette, quite a lot of water uh, because this brush although it's fine and it does hold a lot of water sometimes you run out at the end and, and that can be a good thing too because you don't want everything finished I don't think everything should be finished in a work of art I think there should be a little bit left to the imagination. I don't like seeing a lot of finished detail in any any painting that's a work of art. I like seeing lots of mystical soft and lost edges. I like things missing. And I always come back to watercolour. <laughs> little bit of detail on the rigging and I've just given it a little bit of a spritz to knock some of it back with my one last tissue <laughs> little bit of dark on the crosshairs a little bit of a shadow dragging it down a little bit so there is really virtually not one inch in this painting that is the same as any other inch in this painting everything is different everything is either cool or warm it's dark or light it's medium it's a different type of color it's green or it's brown or it's violet using a little bit of white gouache to uh, use my rigger and to paint the railing that runs around the bow of the boat. Again it's not a big detail issue, it needs to be balanced with everything else. And I guess the painting is more about the dark on the hull of the boat and that dark shadow that has been cast onto the guy with the manganese blue shirt. A little bit more railing at the back of the boat, at the stern. Oh, I can't really tell what I'm doing here. What am I doing? Just some detail and more rigging, more uh, line work. 
bit of spatter, knock it all about. Don't like anything too tight.